Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another live analysis segment here for, I guess it's not really live. We're doing this on Sunday, but it should, might as well be live because we don't have the market moving yet. It is a Sunday, uh, but we are currently waiting for the market to open. And what we're going to do on these videos, as we usually do every Sunday, is I go through the market and I go through ideas or concepts that I'm looking at on some of the major pairs. You can see, in case you are more of a new trader, I'm using tradingview.com. The currency is here, the time frame is here, uh, and the chart is obviously here. And you can see, so right now I'm looking at the euro dollar on the daily chart, but I'm going to flip through some of the major pairs and talk about some concepts and ideas for today. So stay tuned. It is going to be a little bit longer of a video, but I hope you get something out of it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, real quick, before we get too far into this video, can you do me a favor down below in the comments? Let me know. I'm going to use TradingView this week, but would you prefer TradingView or MT4? for my analysis segments. Which one do you prefer? Comment that down below. I'm gonna be looking through the comments to see what people prefer for these videos. So again, I'm doing my analysis on uh, TradingView today, but if you guys prefer MT4 or TradingView, just let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna see what the answer tends to be and go from there. Okay, so let's jump into this thing. Taking a look here at EURUSD for the week, it is, again, it's Sunday, the markets have not yet opened, and we've got some bullishness overall here on the Euro dollar uh, that has kind of stagnated into a little bit more of a sideways trend for the time being, okay? Now, last week we did form a high, we did not break through the highs uh, Thursday or Friday. You can see our, our high was formed on Wednesday right there, uh, and it looks like Thursday came down a little bit, Friday wanted to shoot back up. So it's kind of an interesting kind of a, a situation because we did not close out the week bullish, or at least to the top side, but we did close pretty close to the top. Uh, and we've got this, again, overall uptrend sideways kind of uh, period here. If we just go, let's do this. So um, actually, is this a new tool? Wait, check this out. Whoops, not this one. Is this a new tool, path? I like that, wait, that's so cool. Okay, sorry about that guys. Uh, TradingView is a really cool uh, platform in my opinion. So I'm still learning it about it myself. I've been using it for years and there's still things that I discover. So anyways, uh, taking a look here again, back and forth market. So the idea here, being that we've got uh, this concept here, we've got a range bound market. And we're actually gonna use that path tool because now it's on my mind. Uh, but check this out. The reason I point this out so much is that we, again, we're uptrend overall. My favorite sort of setup here for Euro dollar is if we start to see some bullishness this week, like if we get a nice run, for example, like when we saw this move right here, if we get a clean run like that, uh, one of my favorite setups would be to look for the break and look for the retest. Now, if you've been watching the last few streams or last, last few Sunday uh, analysis points, I've been talking about how I am mostly bearish on the US dollar right now. What that would include would be if price starts running to the upside here on Euro USD, breaking through that high there and retesting to me would be one of my favorite sort of setups to go long uh, and to look for a continuation. Um, so that idea is one that I will be looking out for. Let me just give you just one idea there. Uh, if price were to break out there, let me, one of my favorite ways to play this would be, okay, so we have this range. If price comes back into this range, I don't want to, uh, be in it for too long if price breaks. So let me give you that idea. So let's say that price breaks through this high. We see nice bullish continuation of this overall uptrend that we've been in. If we move bullish and then we come back down and retest this area, I think that I don't want to be in this trade for too long. So I'm probably going to put a stop in the middle of this range. Okay. Now that's not a tiny stop for those of you guys who have really small accounts. You have to be careful that sort of uh, that sort of distance because you can blow the account if you have a large stop. Now, fortunately, Euro dollar is a relatively low volatility pair, so this pip distance might not be as much as you know GJ or something else that could blow your account very easily if you have a small account. Uh, by the way, just in general, my approach to risk would be risking only one to two percent per trade. I know for people who have hundred dollars accounts, they're like, well, I don't want to risk one dollar or two dollars on a trade, uh, but I would say. Uh, just being honest, uh, tough luck, I'd probably find more money to deposit so that my risk is more meaningful and my reward is more meaningful. That's just my opinion because I don't believe in trading with bad 
uh, you know, approaches. Just because I have $100 does not mean I should sacrifice good practice. So um, that is, is there a way for me to end this? Let's see. Can I end this, this point? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So I've ended this idea. So this would be one idea that I'd be looking for on Euro dollar. So we've got this topping point. If price breaks through that and retests, that would be uh, a zone of interest to me going into this week. Now, there would also be the interest on the downside if that were to happen, but I'm more interested in the bullish, and I would have to really reevaluate this one just because, again, we're in an uptrend, lots of strength overall here. Uh, that is highlighted by the fact that, again, we're above that 200, we're above the 50, we're above the 20. Actually, I don't know if we're above the 20. Let's see, just out of curiosity. 20. Click OK. Yep, we're above the 20, the 50, and the 200 right now. So that is bullish uh, overall. But we'll see. That, that's, again, what I'm looking for is a break above and looking to continue this uptrend that we've been watching on Euro dollar. Let's move on, guys. We'll take a look at GBP USD uh, and see how things are looking for this week. So still bullish here. And I actually think that G, GU looks more bullish than uh, Euro dollar personally. And the reason for that is that we've stayed, um, we've, we've maintained strength above uh, this trend line very well and above specifically the 200 period moving average. Notice how price came down to this point here and just barely had a little bit of a uh, little bit of back and forth before shooting off of those lows. I like that a lot and I think that that standard has set kind of a bullish momentum setup. You can see it continued from there very well. Um, and so I still like the idea of looking for pullbacks, looking to be long uh, on GU. Now, again, one of the big things to think about here that we talked about last time is a retest of this high. Does price want to make its move up there? We will see. But I would say that that's naturally where the market wants to go, right? Because if we are in a trend here, if we're in a strong trend and the trend does decide to continue, which I think it will, we'll see, the big idea would be with any trend, what are we doing? We're forming higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend. Now, if we're going down, we're going to flip those lower highs and lower lows. But the idea is that in general, if this trend is to continue, it has to at some point break through that previous high. That is what a trend does, right? Uh, because a trend higher highs, we need a higher high to come into play. If this trend is going to continue, I would say in the next few weeks, we probably need to see a higher high or we'll just enter into a super long choppiness like we got here, right? Back in November, October of 19, all the way to March of 2020, really where things got crazy. We're basically in just a back and forth range. Very possible for that to happen with, with pound dollar, but we've been in an environment you can see where we've got some pretty clean trends forming. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, right? Keeps going. So I'm pretty clear, clearly defined trends. So I think that if the, if the overall bullish trend is set to continue. Uh, one of the things to think about is again, a break through that high. That, now that's not where we are this week. So let's talk just briefly about maybe the four hour chart, see if there's anything, you know, I still think that we have to get to that high. So there might be some bullish opportunities in the meantime. I actually like this area pretty decently right now uh, as a bullish support level. I think that this has potential to be uh, a bull flag kind of uh, opportunity, right? You've got the, the uh, bullish break through a previous resistance. We're, repeat, uh, we're retesting right now. And if price wants to hold this, I'd say it's probably headed past that high. Right? So I'd say that's a decent trading opportunity to think about. So let me line that up. So the decent one here that I like is, let's say that this does get bullish. Let me find my, I'm looking for it. There it is, my bullish setup here. Let's say that price, we, we stick a trade right there and we go for something like uh, a two to one, three to one, something like that. Uh, that's currently a four to one. So we could either put more risk or we could maintain a very small stop. But I actually even like that as a three to one or roughly, right? So the idea here being we broke through structure, we retested, and the idea is, hey, can we keep going bullish to retest this previous high zone, which is something that we already mentioned is what is probably going to happen if this trend continues. So based on the trend, based on the analysis, uh, if price wants to head back to the high, looking for shorter term setups to get to that high, 
could be a decent sort of opportunity. So that's kind of multiple time frame analysis. If you're avail if you're free or free, if you're aware of that sort of thing, we're basically looking at the daily chart. Then we're looking at the four hour chart and looking for opportunities that make sense, trading the zones, that sort of thing. So again, uh, a decent idea there on pound dollar. Uh, again, if you think it's headed back to the highs, there might be a trade to think about there. Uh, let's move on to something else though. Let's take a look at gold today and see if we can find something of interest here. So gold, switch to the daily. Gold has been very, very quiet recently. We have not seen a bunch of movement like we did back here in July, August. We saw gold just running to the mountains apparently because it just went straight up for a long time. Now, that has not been the case recently. We've seen a pretty big decline, or not big, but a steady decline on uh, gold. Now, we are not yet at the 200 period moving average. I think that based on the previous time that we tagged the 200 period, we held that very, very well. Uh, I personally will be looking to see if that one wants to hold again if price breaks lower. Again, we're not there, but if it does repeat uh, a retest of, of the 200 period moving average, I will be looking at that. I think that there's some decent risk reward long term there on gold, right? So let me just give you that example. So if I was to take a trade, let's say price comes down to the 200 period and I just tag the re retested high. Now, personally, I'd probably trail my stops, but just because so many people like to put targets on their trades, um, you know, who am I to judge? My opinion is, you know, looking for a retest of some sort of setup here and even a longer term uh, buy setup. Because if this, if this gold trend is set to continue, the cool thing about a big risk to reward like this or reward to risk is that you take a trade, right? And your risk is very, very small. If it, if it goes against you, then okay, whatever, right? Think about it this way. Let's say you're, you're risking $5 to make $25. Well, if you lose $5, okay, whatever. You can, that's not the end of the world. But if you make $25, it's pretty meaningful to your account gain. So just something to think about. Um, one of the cool things about trading also is that we can actually set an undefined reward, which is what I like to do, which is basically no target and just put a risk on there and then just trail my stop as price goes in my favor so that I'm able to make potentially much bigger gains there if price goes really in my favor. For example, just I, I do this often in my videos, so go find more of my live trading videos if you'd like to see the way I trade. Uh, but the idea is uh, if price breaks through these highs here, I could trail my stop and try and trail it in all the way up on this move, which could result in a giant profit. Now I did not do that, and I really you know wish I had, but that's hindsight. Uh, the idea being that, again, some of the biggest runners can make for really, really big profits if you have undefined reward and you, you know, trail your stops. Uh, again, for the current being, uh, for time being, gold has been bearish. We've, we've seen this downtrend. It hasn't even been a super well-defined one because it's been slow, very slow, right, very back and forth. But I drew these two trend lines last week. We can see that price did actually... Uh, it kind of closed above this trend line here, depending on how you drew it. If you close it strictly along the closes, then, you know, it did break above. It broke back underneath. But we still have some things to think about. We've got this bullish trend line here that I pointed out. We could probably see it better on the four-hour chart. Let's see how this looks. So there it is. Uh, looking at gold on the four-hour chart, you can see if we get rid of this one. When we talk about this point, you can actually see we're kind of in a triangular situation. Basically, the idea here is that buyers are supporting the price on the way up, and sellers have been supporting, or, or I guess rejecting the price on the way uh, down. So anytime price pops up, we get some sort of lower high. Every Anytime we drop lower, we're getting a higher low. How does this result? Well, for me, there's no, of course, we don't know exactly what the price is going to do, but based on the fact that we've got that higher time frame, longer term momentum to the upside, I would say that a break above is very possible. Now, that is based on the idea that, again, we've got that higher time frame in our favor as bulls uh, if you're looking at it, you know, super long term. But short term, the trend is bearish. So it is very possible that it goes either way. So I wouldn't say that, oh, you know, it's in a, tri it's in a triangular situation and uh, the overall bullish trend is there, so it has to go up. That is not the case. It very well could keep going down and continuing to uh, trend downwards for the time being. But again, I think that longer term, we're looking at a still bullish gold market. So we'll see if that happens. I could be wrong about that. I've got uh, I've got you know trades set up on gold that I like, 
personally, again, if you're not already a member with us, you can see all the trades that I am taking inside of the A1 trading community. There is a link down below in the description if you're interested. Um, so that's what I've got on gold. Nothing really too much to say there. Again, some of my favorite setups are a bullish break. Uh, I think that if we were to see something like this, right, if we were to see a break above that and then retest, I think that there's definitely some trades to think about there. I like the idea of retesting the highs, as I mentioned, and I also like the longer term bullish setup if it comes down here to look for a buy setup. Again, it has to get down there for me to be interested, though, and that would kind of be looking for an extension off of the lows of this trend, right? So let's say that price comes down here. Let's use that handy dandy tool again. That was cool. Let's go here. We'll go to path. So let's say price breaks underneath. We go lower, we push lower, right? And we ultimately get down to this point. Well, at this point, I'm interested in bullish setups because we've got two things going for us. We've got the lower uh, extension of this, this downward channel. We've also got an overall upward trend. And uh, we've got that 200 period moving average that could lead to a decent setup. Now, the reason I like this is because I think if we get this set up, that might be enough push to get us to break through this and maybe even, you know, ultimately go bullish up to this point uh, up at the top here, right? So that's a little ugly. Let me fix it. Can I keep going with this? No, I can't. Okay. Yeah. So that's the idea. Uh, I think that that has potential on gold as well. It's a longer term one that we'd probably see, we'd be able to talk about probably on another update before this one, but that is one idea that I am looking for on gold. So we'll see if it happens. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you did enjoy the video, do me a favor, please like the video down below. It does show me that you're enjoying these sort of videos and it shows YouTube uh, that you would like to see more of this sort of content and it'll start recommending this stuff to you. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I see some of you guys are watching the videos but not subscribed. So click that button if you have not already. I know YouTubers ask for it, but it's because it supports us and we put in a lot of work to make these sort of videos. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Happy trading and be safe this week. We'll see you next time.